Good afternoon, and I'm State Senator Emanuel Jones, and the very first thing I want to do is thank the citizens of Georgia for helping all of us pass Senate Bill 299, which is now the law. <laughs> Senate Bill 299 reforms zero tolerance as we know it here in the state of Georgia. And may I add that Georgia now leads the nation in making reforms to a law whose time had long passed. Zero tolerance has been around since the early part of the 90s, and a law that was intended to keep weapons and dangerous weapons and handguns out of the school systems had changed and morphed into something where even good kids were being caught up in a bad system. I am encouraged by a few guests that have joined me here today who I've asked to speak, and that's Judge Teske. I've also asked my good friend, Ms. Amy Hensler. I'm joined by Representative Sharon Beasley Tees and Representative Tony Collins. And I have some members from the ministerial staff as well as some educators that are here with me today. It's important that the public knows that the Tweety Bird keychain, the plastic knife, the toy guns are, no, are now things of the past and kids will no longer be considered felons for making useful mistakes where there was no intent to do anyone any harm. I am so delighted that the governor signed Senate Bill 299 and now made it the law of the land in the great state of Georgia. And I'm so encouraged that this law now will have a huge impact on the 180 school systems across the great state of Georgia. It is my hope that these school systems will see the intent of this legislation. And the intent of this legislation is quite clear, is that we don't want kids that make useful indiscretions to be prosecuted as designate as felons anymore and that we want school systems to exercise some good judgment and common sense when it comes to disciplining school kids for minor weapons and fractions. I've been joined by Judge Teske who was instrumental in working with me. I've also been joined by Amy Hensler and her son Eli Mahone who inspired me to draft Senate Bill 299. I'm going to ask if they will come forward, and then I'm going to ask if some of the legislators that are here with me today will also join as well. Thank you, Senator. Uh, first of all, I want to commend your effort in asserting the leadership uh, on a topic that has been damaging and hurting kids for many years, not only in Georgia but across this nation. And you are absolutely correct that, that this legislation is a turning point in this state in which we are now leading the country in reforming uh, education in a way that uh, instead of harming kids, we are promoting their education. And I want you to know that uh, we need to understand, and I've said for many years, that zero tolerance is zero intelligence. It makes no sense at all, and it's time that we bring common sense to the school systems in this state and Senator Jones, you have done that. And not only have you done it by bringing this legislation, but I am so proud to be a citizen of this state because of the strong bipartisanship that was behind your legislation. And to see this governor sign this bill with enthusiasm. To see this governor and if I've, as I've been down here through this process, many senators and representatives say themselves publicly that this is a bill of common sense. And so with that, I want to thank you. And I also want to thank Eli, the young man who inspired you to bring this legislation. For he was the one who was hurt. For he was the one who went through the pain. But yet he is standing here today, and he can hold his head up high. And we want you to know, Eli, that despite the pain and the abuse that you went through by a system that required zero tolerance, as much as that judge wanted to help you, he was in a position to do what the law said he had to do. Because I know that judge. I know him very well, and he's a good person. And he hated what he had to do. 
And so on behalf of the judges across this state and the immediate past president of the Council of Juvenile Court Judges, we applaud you, Senator, for giving us as judges more discretion in working with kids. Thank you, sir. I want to introduce a good friend who's come to be a good friend throughout this process, who had the courage, and Ms. Hensler had the courage to allow me to use her son's name in, as part of this legislation and to share his story, not just with my colleagues at the General Assembly, but also share his story with the entire state and really the entire nation. Ms. Hensler, thank you. Eli, thank you. And please come up and share a few words with us. First of all, we would like to thank you, Senator Jones, for helping us in this horrible situation. Um, it's been a true learning experience um, to have to go through as a parent to watch your son be hauled off to jail for trying to do the right thing. So hopefully, as Judge Teske said, that this is bringing more common sense back into the school systems, basically, um, where they don't lock children up for trying to do the right thing as far as turning in a knife. It's a little shy. Um, but thank you again. Hopefully this will help the children in the future in Georgia that they don't have to go through anything like we truly did. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hensley. If you were kind of, thank you. I know you have your son here with you, but I want you to just kind of uh, share some of the comments that you shared with me earlier about what you would like to see now that 299 is the law and how you think your son can be helped as well as other kids like him that get into a similar situation. Well, as of right now, my son is on an abeyance, which is um, for a whole year he has to check in with, it's like a probation officer to make sure he can't get into any trouble, he can't go hunting, um, no use of a knife, a slingshot, there's no weapons at all that he can touch for fear of going back to YDC. Um, the probation officer is actually going before the judge, hopefully this week, to um, see if we can end the abeyance a little earlier. He has been on it for six months. He's since joined um, the Boys and Girls Club. He is starting ROTC, it's ROTC. Um, I think this summer or this fall. When he goes into high school, and um, honestly, I would hope it would get wiped off his record. He can't get a scholarship, um, can't get in the military. He has a felony charge. There's really his hands are tied. There's nothing we can do about that unless he's totally taken care of. So, hopefully, this law will change some of that. Thank you. There is one question I wanted to ask. Uh, you and as well as your son. And that's Eli, how have you been able to hold up throughout this entire ordeal? What has inspired you and what have you gotten out of all of this? Check your back before you go to school. Come on up. What happened, by the way? Just tell us what happened. Um, I was running late to school one day, and my mom, she she told me to go get a clipboard and some paper because I had lost my book bag. And she went and got another bag out of my room. And I, when she got it, I threw it in there, and I jumped on the bus. And when I got to school, it was almost like a regular day. And then a boy next to me, he said, is that yours? And then I looked down, and there was my knife 